Howdy folks. Just getting myself sorted here, bear with me. The tea is made. <clears throat> Not got my prep done, but that doesn't matter. Maybe a little random anyhow. It is a in between Christmas and New Year's stream. In fact, it's New Year's Eve, so it is the end of 2021. I think I might be quite happy to um, say goodbye to it more than perhaps other years. I'm sure I won't be alone. Not the greatest of years. Just thinking, maybe I'm a little low here. Let me just adjust my seat a tad. My throat is really, really dry. Oh, my vitamins. Needing these over the period. I to get some more. My old one went out. Just waiting for people to come and join us. There may be a little coughing. I do apologise in advance. I do hope everyone's been having a uh, wonderful season. Christmas season. I hope you're all good. And Santa brought you some of the things that you wanted. Just check that uh, cameras working as well. Mm -hmm. Right, Let's take the lens cap off, it's always a good idea. Let's see if we can get. Uh, hold on. 
Let me just double check this. Let me just check it's powered on. Yes, power. So, why can I not see it? That's very strange. USB camera. Yay! Very good. Let's see if we can get this in some sort of um, position. I also need to plug my bits and bobs in. Don't know if we need later. I wonder if this is the right USB cable. Soon find out. Aperture on here. I don't know what we're going to be working on, but let's just leave it there for the moment. At least I know I've got something. this <clears throat> For some reason, Sorry, just messing with the stuff here. So that we're ready to do that.
That's good. In fact, a bit too far. So weird adjusting things when the angles are opposite, the directions are opposite to what you expect. <laughs> very, very confusing on the mind. Okay, that's ready. That's good. Um, what's the other thing we need? We need. <clears throat> oh, where's the. I've lost my chat window. Let's see if we can improve on this audio a bit now. I'll put the log and mics on. Always good. Oh, always better, in my opinion. In my humble opinion. I can flip. I do notice that the uh, frame rate's very low all of a sudden. It's gone back up again. Not sure where that is. Let me check the network connections. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is start up PyCharm because we're going to be needing to look at that. That's going to take a minute or two to open all the stuff. just kill a few of these windows. I seem to have rather a lot of them open. Um, we need that one today. I might need this one. It's an old M Gen one. Right, um, yes, that's interesting. So it's picked up. Which window is it picked up? Not that one. This one. Which one is that? Ah, it's picked up Black Crab. 
No, this is the old... might need to look at this, but this isn't one I want to talk about today. Um, let me just change this window. Black crab. Yeah. That's very odd. Okay, sorry for the slow start, folks. I'm getting there slowly but surely. Uh, I'm a bit confused why it's picking up this file and not. Alright, let me just change this because I don't quite understand why it's picking that one up. really strange. So it's claiming one thing and showing something else in the preview. Right, that's a bit better. I'm kind of a bit more organised now, folks. <clears throat> so, uh, what's annoying though is the bit that I'm showing here. Um, what I could do, possibly. Take these off. Just have a little um, reconfigure here.
Okay. Now these are ready to rock. So before we look at that, let's just go back to uh, more. What the hell is it done with my... It's so annoying, it's rearranged everything for me. Silly OBS. Okay, something weird going on here. Oh, I see. I know what it is. When I choose that device, it doesn't show it to me. We just go here for a second uh, whilst I'm trying to sort this out. For some reason, my uh, you know regular talk view is not picking up the webcam, and it's really very odd. Now that is a bug, some sort of bug. Okay, so we'll have to work with this temporarily. completely messed up. I don't know what OBS has done with my settings but it seems to have bloody randomised them. It's very odd. Anyhow, how is everyone today? Hope you're all good.
Um, so what I want to do today is review where we are with the um, various um, items in our to-do list for Black Crab and uh, Logic Deck. Um, where did we get to last time? So let's just update. We should update these files first, probably. So these to do's create the PCF file. Well, we did that last time. Uh, in fact, let me just um, make this a little larger so that you can follow, folks. So yeah, we did that. Um, we made an amaranth. Board definition. And we tested to see if it will work with movable tiles. So we ran an internal test, board test of n -Migen. Sorry. It's going to take me a while to get used to this. With amaranth. And that ran perfectly fine. Um, so that's good. Um, we also need to on the on the source code we need to refactor the SPI stuff. I need to do that to use the uh, hardware peripheral rather than the bit banging, which we're currently doing. Uh, but I have the flash programming support as well. As you can see, I haven't done much since the last stream. It being Christmas and then going to see folks, etc., etc., etc. We only literally got back last night, so. Uh, today was my first day back here, and it was chaotic. I had to go and see my daughter as well. And yes, <laughs> uh, when I got back last night, it was very late. And because I kind of wear my glasses in here, my shirt, I often bend over and drop them. And this one kind of fell outside when I got out of the car. Uh, and as a result, uh, I didn't notice, unloaded all my daughter's stuff into her apartment with her, got back in the car and then drove home. <laughs> and you find, uh, where are my glasses? And I looked everywhere in the car, you know, in the front where we park our car and I couldn't find it anymore. And then of course when I popped over to my daughter's today, because I had to help her go pick up some stuff, um, there they were, lying in her parking spot, crushed somewhat. So it's got one lens here, no lens here, and this bit's broken. I mean, I didn't mind to a degree because the lenses on here were pretty messed up anyhow. And, you know, the uh, one of the arms was extremely wonky, forever dropping them. So I'm just switching to the uh, <clears throat> newer set. I'm going to have to get my eyes tested later in the year anyhow probably get some uh, new ones probably more uh, more strength more magnification etc so yeah that was a pain in the ass but there you go crap happens right I mean I didn't we didn't get back to about half 11 p.m. last night and it's three hour drive the folks, not my folks, my wife's folks. Um, and as you can see, I'm still sniffing. I may be slightly hoarse. I do apologise for that. Um, uh, as you may have seen on Discord, I did did mention that my test was negative. It wasn't COVID. It was just some sort of cold, and it's been hanging around like a bad smell all week. I am feeling a bit better today. Uh, my throat is less sore. I'm not really coughing as much. I haven't really got much of a runny nose, which is good. It seems to have moved my vocal cords just slightly, which is why I may be, you know, an octave lower than I normally am. Uh, at some point, 
you know, if my voice gives in, we'll have to um, terminate the stream. But I can kind of talk for now. Just got to keep the liquid going in. Uh, and let's see how far we get, really. So what was I going to do today? Um, what I'll probably do first, actually, uh, let's just, I've, I did get a chance to work on the PCB a bit more from the prototype that we've got here that we're running and doing our software testing on. I'm making some small modifications. So it's probably worth bringing those up. In fact, let me just run that now so I can bring it up in the meantime. Last I remember. Let's see if we can uh, put that on the screen as well. Oh no, look, my CAD window is completely messed up as well. Let me just. Um, And that one's not picking up the uh, webcam either, which is very odd. I don't quite know what's going on there. Um, got the card. Let me see if I can um, show you that in the meantime. Just going through these changes briefly. Let's do a quick review. Well, I'll just bring it up so you can see it, guys. It's not picked it up yet. There we go. Uh, mm, 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 so. Right, it's a bit messy at the moment. I'm just trying to sort out the windows because for some reason it seems to have got mixed up with which device is which. Uh, it may be something I've done, but the result is um, it seems to have mixed up the uh, different cameras and the settings for them. Where's my chat? It's not showing me the chart for some reason. I seem to have mixed my chat box up with the um, webcam, which is rather strange. I don't know what that means. Okay, fair enough. Let's 
we will uh, keep it that way. Let me just test this chat box. Sorry. Uh, make sure it's picking it up. Right, so let's just go through the uh, PCB changes first. Let's just cover that for the Ice Logic deck. Um, I'm trying to remember what they were. I've deleted the to dos as I've gone along. So I'm going to have to use, just use my memory. Uh, one of the things that I have done and that I'm still experimenting with is I've added these into the connectors. Uh, let me see my cursor here. Uh, so you can get versions of the connectors that have these uh, polarizing bumps. Well, not polarizing bumps, but positioning bumps. So I've added those in. I did get some, but it's a bit of a mystery um, because when I ordered them, the data sheet didn't show those. Uh, and I don't have a data sheet with those on, so I've kind of measured them and approximated. So I'm hoping those are going to work nicely. But we may not be able to supply them. I think I was, you know, it didn't say that those were the ones that they were going to provide me with. So I was a bit confused that I had some like that. I mean, I couldn't fit them on this board because it doesn't have the holes and they just don't fit unless you cut them off. But anyway, so I've added that. Um, I've also changed, I've used polygons here for the power areas for uh, the positive side. Um, sorry, here. polygon there, polygon there. Before we had um, something else. But when I put these uh, holes in, uh, these had to be polygons. And I had to move around the, uh, the power through wires. So I had to change those to polygons. Uh, I've added a 5 volt logic supply that can be input or output depending on how you use it as well. Um, the other thing that I've got at the moment is I've got the, before we had the power LED up here which was a pain actually, um, but now I've got the power LED here. I've rearranged which uh, resistor arrays I'm using as well to make better use of them so that there's less uh, so they are more efficiently used and there are less standalone 0402 resistors. In fact, the less 0402 resistors, the better for placement as far as prototypes are concerned. So they are fiddly. Um, so there's an LED there at the moment. I am thinking about that when we return to a question I've got from that. Uh, there's a new array here um, instead of a, an individual and we've juggled around the various resistors we're using. I've spread out these uh, uh, caps here for the crystals, uh, the matching capacitance for the crystals. Uh, just to make placement slightly easier, it was very easy to get shorts between these before. Uh, the other thing I've done is I've moved from a push button that's horizontal that was placed here to a right angled version similar to the one that we were looking at using on the mezzanine board for user buttons. So that's just easy to access from here, basically. Um, so that will be a nice little improvement. And I've checked the footprint against, because I've actually received some of these uh, as a nice little bonus that turned up over Christmas. Uh, so I got to check the footprints. And I had to make a few adjustments, actually, because they were slightly different from the... Uh, the specifications which is not you know that unusual you get a variation like that 
particularly if you're buying on Ali and places like that, some of the Asian suppliers. Uh, the other thing that I did here was the, this is important changes, the debug connector has been shifted along to the left here. Um, so it now fits in a little better if we wanted to put a whole thing there. But in reality, I'm probably not going to use the shrouded version of this because it still makes it really cramped with respect to the USB next to it. So this will just be a standalone right angled set of connectors. And I may do an offset thing on here and offset these pins just slightly so that you don't actually have to solder them in. You can just push fit them in when you're debugging and then remove them uh, when you're not debugging. So in the deployment scenario, you wouldn't want that. I mean, having to resolder and unsolder those would be a pain in the ass. And it's a 1.27 pitch, not a 2.54 mil pitch, a 0.05 inch which is quite tricky to solve in the first place. Um, I've also corrected the fact that I flipped the upper from the lower rows mistakenly on the previous design. So it will be the right way around this time, which is good. That will save me some effort. I still haven't received, uh, removed the, um, these uh, <coughs> protection uh, chips for the USB. Uh, I still haven't worked out exactly what's going wrong with those and why those are causing problems, but they most definitely are both of them. I've got to investigate that a bit further, but you know I may be leaving those out of the design basically because uh, I'm not happy with how they're working. I've moved a few caps around just to give myself a bit more room. I've eliminated a few more um, uh, 0402 resistors, which is good. I've added another array here. On the power supply selection, now you'll see that the VCC and the free volt free are now together in this area. Um, I've literally moved the free volt free from over here all the way over here, um, and it's just made things a bit more organised and a bit better. Uh, the circuit itself hasn't changed; it's just the position of change, and it still has good, you know, routes through to the various planes, the VCC plane and the 3 volt 3 plane. So we still got good production all the way through, low impedance. Um, whatever small changes have been made here. I think that's the major ones. Um, the reset resistor I'm using is in, in here, shared with the SD cards now rather than external. It makes a shorter path which is better i've taken quite a few pins various pins off the left hand part of the mezzanine connector structure because um, we now take the hyperbus up to the mezzanine connector so we can add the uh, hyper ram onto the mezzanine card so that makes it configurable by mezzanine card so we can have different configurations, different sizes of hyperram, etc. Or we can mix and match hyperram and hyperrom. It also keeps the cost of the board lower when people don't want to use the um, extra hyperram. Or they can use those IOs to do something other than hyperbus. Uh, it's an extra 11 IOs on there. Plus you've got the TX and RX, plus you've got another four, I think, spare ones on the right hand mezzanine connection on here so in total you've got um, you've got effectively 15 plus the URTX so it's actually quite flexible for doing different kinds of things on the mezzanine I mean you could for example if you want to put a USB high speed 2.0 uh, you know uh, a, a USB um, 33 XX series PHY on there with those pins if you wanted. <coughs> so that, that buys a bit more flexibility, keeps the board cost down because it doesn't force everybody to have the hyper RAM. You can then choose that if you need that. <coughs> 
So that was quite a big change in terms of the number of pins, but it was actually a fairly easy change because it was, it's right next to where the hyperam was. I think those are the major changes. I don't think there was anything else I did. There were some cleanup bits and bobs. Um, can I remember those off the top of my head? Uh, I think I may have changed a little bit of the power routing and stuff and improved that slightly. Um, um, I, d I also updated the um, the uh, library part for the tile uh, so it now includes the cutoff section so you can see where that is when you're designing a tile uh, you've got a dotted view that enables you to see where that uh, cutout is um, oh Laurie's just saying hello mentioned the streams down and I can see zero uh, zero frames per second which is never a good sign let me just check Um, just dealing with a few networking issues. One thing I've got to do as one of my um, um, jobs in the new year is to work out what the heck is wrong with my network I've got I've got the dodgiest section disconnected at the moment so I'm surprised I'm still getting issues I think I need to get the uh, cable modem the optical cable modem replaced I'm convinced that it's not doing what it ought to and that uh, it's probably the source of a lot of the problems but that's provided by uh, the cable provider so they don't seem to think there's a problem uh, when you run the diagnostics and stuff we will have to wait and see um, if I can convince them otherwise if I can get someone to come out I'll be able to recreate the problems I get <coughs> oh. I need to switch on to some uh, water for some hydration Mm. Let me just check that it's hunky dory on the network side. I'm just talking to um, Laurie. Yeah, he's giving me the thumbs up. And the audio is okay. Let me know if it isn't, Lauren. Uh, should be. It looks okay on the meters here. Yeah. 
I'll just do a quick recap. So, Laurie, all, all I've been talking about so far is um, uh, just the personal stuff because I've only just got back last night from our folks over Christmas, so I haven't had a chance to do much. Uh, but the one thing that I did do some work on was the PCB changes from the current prototype to the new version, <clears throat> the updated version. So I was just going through those just briefly to recap. Uh, the I, We did have an LED on the top here. I've moved that down to here. Um, I've added 5 volt connector there. That can be in and out. I've uh, put a right angled uh, boot mode switch on here rather than the horizontal one there it makes it easier if the mezzanine cards on top you can still get to it which you couldn't with the horizontal one uh, I've moved a few caps and things about improved the spacing and stuff <coughs> removed a few 0402 resistors added an array or two to make things more organized uh, I've bunched the power uh, switch modes together 3 volt 3 in the VCC uh, which were split and uh, I've changed it moved where the debug connector is as well so that now fits a full shroud if you wanted to I'm not going to provide the full shroud I'm probably just going to provide a bare right angle connector I'm probably going to offset the hole slightly so you can just push it in rather than having to solder it that means you can use it uh, when you're debugging and remove it when you don't need it you know deployment sort of scenarios and then of course the other big thing I've changed around here is the uh, the hyper ramp chip has been removed and I've taken the hyper bus up to the mezzanine left hand connector here and I've also moved the some of the GPIOs down to here and we're using slightly less number of GPIOs from the STM32 the other thing I was apologizing for earlier is I'm, I may be like an octave lower um, although my uh, COVID test was negative last week, I did have some sort of cold which persisted all the way through Christmas, wonderfully. Um, sore throat, cough, the cough's pretty much gone. The sore throat's kind of dimmed down, really. I just kind of have a dry throat now, but it seems to have moved to my vocal cords, hence the octave shift. If my voice runs out, you will know why. Uh, and we may have to... Uh, Terminate the screen. Although I'm not going to do a really long stream today, anyhow. I'm probably going to call it uh, at about nine o'clock. I shouldn't wonder. Um, <clears throat> there, you should be caught up roughly. Didn't miss much. Uh, but yeah, the cold is be is better. I'm feeling better in myself, and I can feel it's getting better. But it's still dragging, like they do. <laughs> So that's the PCB changes. I also had fun with OBS because it seems to have changed all my camera settings around and stuff. I to kind of reset all that up, which has been fun. So you had the uh, um, benefit of missing all that crap at the start. <coughs> right. Um, so have I covered everything on the PCB? I haven't missed anything, have I? Trouble is, I haven't got a to-do list because the to-do list was in the CAD and as I was doing them, I deleted the items off. So I've got no record of what they were. So I'm just going from memory here. Anyhow, it's nearly ready. As I said, there will be one small change, which is... Um, just offsetting these pins on the debug connector. So that you can do a solderless insertion connection um, and I may want to revisit the LED situation this you know and move the uh, power LED down to here one of the things I was thinking possibly is having two RGB LEDs one just for the FPGA stuff which would be two FPGA pins connected to say uh, the blue and green and then the third LED, LED being connected to the red one to the done pin on the FPGA and that would leave one pin for power on this RGB and another one for mode and a user one spare that's a possibility I'm still wondering if there's any point in doing that 
the scheme I have currently on here is that one of those pins is connected to done for the single LED another one is connected to the STM32 for status display and the third one is connected to the FPGA so that we can do an FPGA blinky that's how it is at the moment it's kind of minimalist let me know what you think on that it is possible for me to add another one in but it may require some fiddling with um, resistors and stuff I'm still not 100% decided on that but that's the only thing left outstanding for me on, on this schematic before I ordered the new boards uh, in terms of getting the new boards made um, <clears throat> I need to order them from Asia again now I probably want to do this sooner rather than later what's worrying me I mean first of all we've got to try not to slip into February and March because you've got the Chinese New Year and they just close down you can't get anything um, so we need to do it before then it needs to be ordered in January um, so sooner rather than later because I'm also a bit worried about shipping I'm hearing now excuse me um, that there's some lockdown going on but I don't know regionally where that's going on in China because of Omnicron um, so that could be disruptive uh, so I might need to um, you know any stuff that I need order, order sooner rather than later I may be under pressure to do that I was trying to leave it to the last minute really so that if I needed to change anything I could <clears throat> um, but I also want to get these boards out as soon as possible the other thing I'm thinking of doing is um, I was thinking of getting a small pick and place machine here to do small runs on things like the tiles and stuff and I'm still toying with that idea um, and there are these uh, charm high uh, I can't remember 36 VAs I think they are they're like desktop ones. they're not big proper uh, standalone ones uh, they're only for dealing with small quantities it's just to make it easier to make small quantities of stuff um, you're really pushing it um, doing 0402 on them but you can do it I've seen several people doing 0402 on them successfully it, you do have to keep your eye over it it's not something you just leave running not like a proper machine in that sense it does mess up it has problems with the tape reels it has issues with wonder sometimes and misses steps and it can have sometimes have issues with the camera there's all sorts of things you have to do a bunch of furry hoops that you have to jump through in order to get any results out of the damn things but the good thing is they only cost about three thousand pounds about four thousand dollars something like that uh by the time you paid shipping and stuff so i was toying with the idea of getting one of those uh in the new year uh i am however rather short of funds so we will have to see uh i was thinking about maybe raiding the piggy bank but I need to check what I really should do is get some of these out the door first that would give me uh, a bit more room financially to play with on this because um, I want to I want these to be able to pay for that I it to become self-funded in that that sense it will just make it much easier particularly on the tile front being able to knock out tiles I also learned something really interesting. I've got one of these um, liquid resin 3D printers, which I haven't been using yet. But it turns out you can actually use them to do uh, UV PCB uh, etching, which I hadn't thought of before. I, I, I've seen a few people doing it on YouTube videos and that, so I might give that a go as well. That's a really quite quick way of doing a fast turnaround local PCB um, etch 
uh, for things like tiles, something that's not particularly complicated PCB work. I mean, you can't do four layers. You could only ever do one or two layer, and mainly just one layer. But it's good for experimentation. Just knocking up quick tiles is what I'm thinking of here. So at some point next year, I'd love to do an episode of just quickly building a tile using that um, that process, which would be kind of cool. Uh, and that will be interesting and that will help me tremendously if I can do that um, it would be a really nice little bonus to be able to do that and to be honest I hadn't thought of it quite frankly it just never occurred to me that I'd be able to do that but it does use UV because it's a UV cura and it's got a very high resolution set of um, these DLP mirrors or whatever in there to give high resolution uh, UV, imp UV imprints on the plane so perfect I think you have to jump through a few hoops in terms of getting the PCB in a format you have to get it reversed and mirrored and all that kind of stuff but it's doable so that will be a fun one to do in the new year um, so are we covered on the PCB stuff uh, the other thing we wanted to talk about was maybe I said that I was going to do a limited run in January of these boards for the first however many. I haven't decided the number yet. I need to think how many I can get made at a reasonable cost. But I was just thinking of features. One of the things I was thinking about is um, maybe... Um, having them in ENIG um, ENIG if you don't know what that is that is basically if you look at uh, I'll give you an example here I don't know if I've got an ENIG example I've got, hold on. let me see if I can find something appropriate yeah so if you look at um, uh, black black ISMX, right? Can you see the areas that aren't don't have pads in them? So if you look in particular, like at the uh, mounting holes at the top, see how they're silver? Uh, there's probably other pads on there that silver, and at the bottom, the holes in the uh, in the corners. Um, but this is a, a hassle, a lead-free process that results in a silver finish. Um, but you can actually get a superior finish by using what's called ENIG or ENIG, and it's a chemical gold finish. Um, I wonder if I've got anything here that I could show you. Um, Hold on just a sec. Let me see. I'm pretty sure that there were Okay, so if you take this for example, here's a board I did. Um, some time ago, I don't even know what this was. This was a, I think this was a PMOD board. Here, I didn't get a focus on that. Now that, that this is from Osh Park by the way and it's kind of purple but it's can you see the gold enig finish on that ENIG that's the chemical gold process it's a bit more blingy uh, it's one of the reasons we love uh, Osh Park actually is because they always use an enig for prototypes and it's actually nicer it's a nicer finish to work on for prototypes and things as well. It tends to be smoother. So you actually get a better finish.
Uh, I just get a message from my post. Excuse me one second, folks. So yeah, um, perhaps going, you know, the unique route might be better. I think that would be good. Because normally I don't go unique for a couple of reasons. Uh, primarily around cost and other things. I kind of go with the devil I know. But it is possible for me, what is this board as well? I think this was uh, a plea mod for servos that I never made. There you go. Um, so yeah, so for the first, um, however many of these boards, the premier boards, if you like, I could do them in Enig, um, which would be kind of cool and blingy. The other thing I can do that's different, I'm going to have to take my mic off again, I do apologise. I should have been more prepared. So currently, um, If you look at the, uh, let me just change the view. Hold on. Seems to have lost the um So if you look in the bottom right here can you see where the holes are? There's like a... Well, the way that we're separating the different boards, the spaces we're using... Let me get this damn bag open. Are these, which if you look carefully, are black to go with the boards. So these are the ones that I'd normally use and will be using for the shipping boards, the general purpose shipping boards, the general shipping, if you like, yeah, and those separate the boards, thus, yeah, so they all goes together, nicely, let me see them, but, what we could do on these premier boards, as well as have it Enig, a gold finish, we could also use some slightly more blingy uh, spacers. 
like these. It's a bit more blingy, you see, that would go with the gold rather than black ones. And just to compare, I'll do one black and one gold, you'll see the difference. Totally different look. Yeah. Black versus gold. So on these um, Premier ones, they'll be a bit more blingy, potentially. By gold, you mean brass? Uh, I post said. Yeah, these aren't these aren't gold connectors, by the way. <laughs> I wish they would be rather expensive. They were gold. They're actually, um, as uh, I post says, they're actually made out of brass. They're a, uh, you know, composite metal. But they look a bit more blingy. And you, if you want to see those, you can actually see these. Um, and combined with the blingy um, Enig, you get a bit more matching, you see. I'll give it the focus. So on there, you should be able to see the different uh, appearance. So it just goes together nicely. So if I go with Enig for the first ones, <clears throat> you have to go with the uh, brass type connectors. I don't know, what do you think? Is that beneficial to go that route? Just for the first lot. I mean, it does add cost, but it's kind of nice. <clears throat> Let me just put my mics back on. I can feel my voice going slightly. <laughs> Lubrication for throat. <clears throat> uh, I wouldn't make it an option during um, purchase I post it's either one or the other because <clears throat> when I buy them I have to buy them as a you know in quantity they the goal the, the unique thing finish would be a one-off basically uh, otherwise they'd just be the normal silver and black you know the normal shipping ones this would only be available as a kind of as the premier one i.e. the first batch uh, just reading the comments here um, Lloyd's just made some suggestions here Oh yeah, it's to-do list. So if we look at the uh, Black Crab to-do list, I've, the thing I did earlier is I marked these as done because we've, we've added these in. Um, but quite rightly, um, one option here to add is um, 
Oh. Cheated for me. Um, the um, keycard version of the template. Very important. Or the tile template. Um, I did change the tile template. I mentioned that earlier. You may have missed it. Sorry. Uh, if you were late coming, uh, the fit I've had something else I've added to the tile template now is a dotted line for the cutout area, so you can see when you're designing your tile where the cutout would correspond to, so you know where to put the taller components on the connector side. Um, <clears throat> I posted saying that that must be a bit of work uh, to create the keycap version, but in reality, it's not that difficult because you can actually import Eagle. <clears throat> Eagle files into KeyCAD now. The imports are pretty good. So the import would do most of the work. I'm sure there'd be some issues that we might have to clean up afterwards, but yeah. We should be able to import them in. I need to get uh, KeyCAD 6 up uh, now that it's gone final or release. Um, and I will probably. Once, once I get it into KeyCAD, I will probably then, I, I'd like to do a stream where we use KeyCAD to actually um, make a tile. Any of the new tiles I'm, I make may well be done in KeyCAD rather than Eagle anyhow. Um, uh, Laurie reminded me of something else to add on the black crab front um, we need to add uh, UART support quite rightly or UART over or UART via USB ah, USB CDC. <coughs> Excuse me. That came from nowhere. See, I do sneeze occasionally still. It's cold. Oh, completely gone. Oh, that sent a shiver down my spine. I really wish I could shake the thing off completely. Yeah, thank you for reminding me of that. It's on the list now, Lauren, so we can't forget it. Um, okay. Any questions? Uh, I haven't. What, what I said at the start of the screen, again, you may have missed, is I haven't had a chance to do anything on the black crab side or any more testing really on the um, on the Ice Logic deck because, well, it's been Christmas and I've been up at folks and stuff. As, as I said, I didn't get back until late last night, so I just haven't had a chance. Uh, the only stuff that I could do was I did a bit of um, the PCB CAD fixes that I said we'd do to get the PCB in order um, so that I can get those ordered ASAP. I do have to do the mezzanine with the. Uh, Hyperam on it as well before I make that order because I'm going to order both those at the same time. Plus, I will need to order a whole bunch of tiles. What I was thinking, let, let, let's quickly uh, mention that actually. Sorry, switching back to shipping in January or at least ordering all the stuff in January so we get it before the Chinese New Year <coughs> where everything shuts down. What I was thinking as a kit, um, so I supplied the initial ones as a kit. So what you what you would have is the Ice Logic deck, uh, a mezzanine board with a hyper ram on it, um, and then a set of tiles. And that set should include, I think, a proto tile, so you can do your own protos. A breadboard tile, so you can do breadboarding. Uh, a seven-segment tile, which is good for learning purposes and stuff. 
and a VGA tile and then um, I think the P mod super tile uh, because many of the people buying the initial ones special ones will probably have some P mods so the double P mod tile as well so in other words you've got a full house of tiles including mezzanine in the kit I don't know what your thoughts are guys and girls on that Uh, and iPost is asking where would I purchase tile connectors for connecting to Logic Deck? Do you mean for making your tiles? Uh, the Premiere would have HyperRAM on the mezzanine board, but I wasn't going to include HDMI as standard at this point. I was going to do the HDMI tile later, probably in KiCad. It's just a limit to what I can get done in time. Because I've got it. I, I want to go with things that I've tested that I know work, basically, um, my post. <clears throat> and I won't have tested the HDMI um, tile at that point. We will do that early next year. That's one of the early ones that we'll do because it's I have enough pieces to build a few when I order the PCB so that we can do the testing. All right, so you're talking about the headers on the tile. They're very easy to get. I, I order them from <coughs> uh, from AliExpress. They're relatively low cost. I can provide a link for those. There are a number of vendors. They're really easy to get hold of. Much better to buy them from there as well because if you buy them from the US suppliers, you know, the DigiKeys, etc. They're really expensive. Because uh, I think they only do like the Samtech ones, which are not cheap. They're very nice, but total overkill. <clears throat> I mean, I could make uh, those available as well so that people can buy them from me so I could ship them. as another possibility uh, I post saying he bought his uh, Black Ice MX connectors from Ali you mean the um, mix mob ones <coughs> do excuse me sorry my throat's getting very dry now. yeah the connectors tend to be much cheaper from Ali um, although the quality can vary, but they tend to be pretty good. They're, they're, they're pretty much commodity items, you know, in Asia, so lots of people supply them and resell them, you know, in various quantities. <clears throat> if you want to buy like a thousand or a reel or something, you can actually get them made to your specification. So you can have, you know, specific heights and things. Which is kind of cool. <coughs> Crikey. Do excuse me. Uh, just give me a sec. I'm just going to get a bit more water. Hold on. I'm just going to mute myself as I fill my water up.
back again. Yes, yeah, so I have to keep myself well lubricated with this dry throat. I mean, I hope you've all been having been good this Christmas and got what uh, you are Santa for. I got an interesting one. I don't know if you've ever seen these. They're kind of cool. They're like uh, desk electric screwdrivers. Great for the small precision stuff rather than heavy duty stuff. My wife got that. It's called a wow stick. That's going to be fun. I haven't tried it yet. I haven't had a chance. Whilst I'm here, I'm just going to take advantage of something else that uh, somebody bought me. Because I need some sugar, actually. I haven't yet eaten this evening. We're eating later. I've already cooked what we're having. But... Um, this will keep me going. Room. Other choices of triangle or chocolate are available. This is not a promotional channel. Mmm. Wow, this is good stuff. I haven't had this in months. Oh, I post got a synthesizer. Wowza. What kind of synthesizer did I post get? Oh, so you also got to wife some of those candies. Yeah, got to get some candies for Christmas. Traditional, you know. Mmm, this is so good. I'm just thinking about the calories I've eaten so much. I've must have been on pounds and pounds. Skewport PLT is that from Mode? Wow. Oh, from Module. Oh, Laurie's back. He missed some of our chat. And me eating chocolate. Chocolate I won from Santa. We were talking about uh, how good we've been and the lovely gifts that we received. Sorry. Oh wow, cool. Oh wow, that looks really good. Skull PLT, Synth FE. It's a powerful portable performance synthesizer that allows musicians to perform and compose anywhere. This lightweight USB or battery powered synthesizer features a unique 32 oscillator virtual analog sound engine. Well, it's certainly got a lot of dials on it. I'll copy the link into the chat because not everyone's on Discord. If you go down to Discord, you can actually see that. See what uh, I post is posted. It looks pretty cool. Are those proper keys on it? Um, I post or are those touch 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 keys. The uh, the ivories, if you like, the notes. I guess you're only really using them for um, sequencing and stuff, right? Rather than line. I've kind of missed out on the modern synth. I remember playing with synths back in the 80s and 90s. You know, Korgs and the like. But I haven't really played with them since. They've come an awful long way. You can get an incredible amount of functionality in a tiny device now.
I mean, is it FPGA based? That's the question I post. I'm sure someone could do a magnificent FPGA based synth. But it would be digital, of course, not analog. And I know there's a big analog thing with synths right now. Retro. Where people tend to prefer the old analog sounds and dials and yeah, and the patching as well, the movie like patching, that's kind of funky. Where they they're building rack, you know, 19 inch rack based slot modules, which is kind of cool. Not sure. Too scared to rip it open. Yeah. What is it Dave Jones says? Don't use it, rip it apart. <laughs> But on an expensive gift, you may not want to do that. The Euro racks are too advanced for me. Yeah, a bit of fun if you want to do some electronic um, assembly. But not too difficult to design. The big problem is noise with analog. That's where it gets tricky. You can introduce a lot of noise if you're not careful. So, uh, back to the um, back to back to back to back to back to back to. Let me just save this first. We should go back to the um, logic deck. So, how are we doing for time? We still got a bit of time. We got some test working last week, didn't we? Uh, let me see if I can open that. Um, let me just bring that to the front. And get rid of the other one. Change the window in here. You can see what I'm doing. Um, I think it was this one. I may need to rearrange this window slightly. So I think last week we did the um, <clears throat> we did the board file, didn't we? So we did the PCF, we did the board file. Uh, where did I put it? PCF file. And then the board file. Which we may need to revisit in a minute if we need to change anything. And Oh, we will need to update the mezzanine pinouts for this uh, because we've added the hyper -am. What did we put here? Connector ones. Did we put a mezzanine? Can't remember. Connector mez one, mez mez a, mez b. So those are going to be different now, aren't they? Because oh, uh, maybe we should update that. Should we do that first before we do and then I was thinking maybe what we could do is port uh, some of Laurie's uh, work maybe the seven segment and get a seven segment tile going or something like that if we've got time um, so let me get the pinouts for The mezzanine. 
uh, how have I done measure A and B? Which order have I done them in? Hmm. So if you art, it should be RX and TX. Let me just check that. J2, K2, RX, TX. Yes. Okay. And then, can you read that, guys? Or do I need to make the uh, text bigger? To make it a bit bigger. Um, then we've got uh, right, DQ2. DQ4. This is the hyperbus coming up the mezzanine. Uh, DQK. DQ0. Uh, <clears throat> DQ0. Waiting, waiting. DQ zero, DQ five. I know these are an odd number, but I'm just uh, avoiding crossing them on the board. I mean, we can, we may have to cross some of them when they actually connect on the mezzanine to the hyper ramp. But they should work out quite well because it was connected to the hyper ramp here. Although they may be flipped, you may have to flip the orientation of the chip once they've been up to the connector. DQ5, DQR, DQR, um, DQR, DQR, DQ1, slightly strange order. I mean, this was optimized as well from the pinout choices that uh, Sylvan made. Uh, DQ1, DQ6, DQ. Six and DQ six DQ seven DQ three DQ three DQ three then we've got DS out which is the uh, DSO, D, DS0, which is the select select pin. We then have from the STM32, we have the HRST as well, but that's not a name pin. Oh, right, okay. So I now need to replace these with their appropriate um, pin number. This is going to be fun. So, D, what's the first one? DQ2, that's it. L1 uh, DQ4 that's J3 DQK is L2 pin DQ0 in fact I'm not I should probably make a note here. This would be a very sensible thing to do. Let's just copy these. Uh, D Q2. DQ4 and DQ4 It's good to have a note of those there. Maybe comma separated actually.
<coughs> so DQ zero what is it in for that? Uh where is K3? Uh DQ five is well it should be wouldn't it? Hold on. Did I miss one out? Or did I jump straight to Q5? Q4 K0. Q4 K0. Right, so two four DQK zero two and then DQ zero which is K three and DQR in this case I do DQ five then DQR. Okay, so that's what's confusing me. So DQ five is L three. Uh, DQR is J4. J4. DQ1 is K4. Uh, DQ6 is L4. DQ7. DQ7 J5. Sorry, this is a bit boring, folks. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, DQ3 K5. Almost there. DS0 is K6. Let me just check what I've got here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then how many pins beyond that do I have? I just want to double check if I've got the right number of pins on the mezzanine. I then got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it's right. Cool. And then the user ones on the other side I've already got. So that should be complete now, although I could put this actually just to make it more clear. <coughs> Uh, on this I've already got a user one but I haven't got good names for those yet right okay cool I consider that done at this point Uh, thanks for the link. I will I will go there in just a sec. Um, sorry. Um, maybe I should. I wonder what this. Do I need to? Run this to try. I tell you what I need to do. I need to run Black Crab on the device.
Well, then, let me find the right one. See if I can um, run black crab. Just run a PowerShell with the um, um, Open OCD debugger. I have connected. Hold on. Bear with me. Just try and run the um, load the firmware up on the logic board. Make sure that's running. Continue. Right, that should be running. Let me just run the uh, Python ice logic debt test of the blink thing, I guess, first. Uh, Python Ice Logic Deck. What did we do for the test? <laughs> Blinky. Um, but that was in a different position. We wrote another one as well, didn't we? We wrote, uh, what was it? Tile Tester. Was it this one? LED test? Is that in my history? I can't bloody see it. Then. test CD. HD uh, tests yes. test or tests test Yay, that's running. Although you can't see it, hold on, let me just see if I can show you guys.
I'm a bit caught on the cable, but I can't move it properly. But you can see it's actually counting on there. That was what we wrote last time. So that's working, which is good. So I know the chain's working. Right, which way do I want to go? I want to go that way, maybe not quite that much. Right, so now we want seven segment. Um, so if we look at this, uh, let's just start with. Uh, let's have a think what we need to do here. I'm just going to open up um, let me just open up the um, browser briefly so I can download those Let's do a new file here. Uh, what level are we at? We've got the tile tester here, HDL test. Um, just, I'm just reminding myself of the file structure here. Bear with me, folks. Um, HDL. Uh, I'll just put it in HDL test for the moment. this stuff Here, tile two, but it's actually in tile one position. So let's just change that. <clears throat> then we're going to need uh, a class and elaborate. Let's just do the uh, just copy and paste so we can change it. Save a bit of time. Oh, 
Oops. Too much. Too much caps. Um, if we look at... Right, so how have we defined this? The way it's defined in the uh, example is thus. And then this resource name should be um, Does a class do here? But it does. Something like this. But it's expecting these to be organized like that. So we're going to have to change this stuff. We also need to import something else. Hold on. We need that. Which we don't have. Let me fetch that. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to copy that in temporarily. It should be in a separate file. Um, hold on. Now let me put that in a separate file. Actually, I'm not talking about to it properly. Let's just add here. We 
file. So that all looks good. So I just need to deal with the differences between these two structures here. Do I need to create a similar? Okay, so let's just look at that. Can you uh, read that okay, guys? So the sub signal here is a tile. So what I could do is I could copy and paste this. So that would be I replace this with I would replace these pin numbers with these, right? Or would that not be right? Not cool. It's confusing as to what those pin numbers should be. So con tile one. So that would be con tile one. And these would be um, these pins right so whilst I'm doing that let me just open the open the seven segment tile because we'll need the pin outs Sorry, I noticed the uh, stream is going a little uh, up and down. I do apologise. I don't know why it's doing that. Hopefully it'll come back up now. Rehydrate. So if I'm to recreate this then... This would be 419.11. How would I do this using tiles so that I could change the tile number without changing the pins? These numbers have to correspond to those pins, don't they? I'm just thinking what these numbers are here, um, Laurie. Can you remember? Are those uh, are those pins of the FPGA or are those pins on the mix mod. So 
Someone's letting off fireworks already. They're a bit previous. According to my clock here, it's only nine o'clock or ten past. <coughs> Fireworks at nine o'clock on New Year's Eve. That just won't do. My goodness. The numbers should be pin numbers on the tile. Okay, so um, A1 is actually. Um, do I start not one? Well, one, two, A1 is three. Uh, A2 is 2. I'm going to have to reverse these if I misinterpret this. Come on. Then, next one up. 4 is G. Um, five is F. Five is F. Um, six is A. Usually, six is A, and. E seven B is eight decimal point is nine. Uh, D is ten. Hold on, there's something out here. Cocked up. I'm going to have to go back and check. Please turn. Uh, 19, 11, 12 is C. That must be 8. B is 8. Let me just show you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I think that's right. What am I doing? Oh, what did I just do that? I didn't mean to do that. Um, LED seven. Hmm. Did I change the name on here? Hold on. Yeah, that's right. 
doesn't it like about that? Oh, he just doesn't like the name. So that should work then. Subsignal. I need to import that. Doesn't like that. What doesn't it like about this? Doesn't like the formatting. Pep eight E one twenty eight continuation line under indented for visual indent. What? Hold on. Just redo this. Maybe it doesn't like the formatting. Yeah. Damn it. It's just complaining about my indent formatting. It's because I copied and pasted it from uh, GitHub view rather than the original file. Okay, so if I uh, save that, what happens if we try and run it? Let's see if it complains. Um, Yay! Oh, we be having the numbers countings. Excellent. Let me see if I can change the uh, light level. Maybe turn that away a bit. That would help. Light indirectly of it. Marvellous. Yes, that's working nicely. These are good. I think the scan frequency is quite low though. I can see it flickering here. I'm using quite a low scan scan rate. But it may be that the clock is running at 16 rather than 25 megahertz as well. I mean, you can't see it on the display there, which is good. But I can definitely see it flickering here. <coughs> Excellent. <coughs> Can everyone read that? I can probably make it a bit, a bit larger now. So there's a resource definition. So if we move this to another tile, we just need to change that. And that could be a, presumably a constant at the top. <clears throat> Marvellous. Thank you, Laurie. So the code's fine. Oh, my throat's very dry now. Uh, any questions on that? Folks. Otherwise, I will say mission complete. Uh, we should make the tile number a constant, as you say, and it should use the clock frequency to calculate the refresh rate. Yeah. 
and the time signal is wider than it needs to be but that was just quick to get it working mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do, 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 do. is there a I, I forget is there a way of defining constants in Python or would you, you just it's so out of practice with Python I mean if I did it doesn't like um, caps actually if I did that I mean normally you'd probably do sorry that right and then Which does look a bit gibberish in the resource definition. Tile in speech marks. Tile in caps. But then these resource definitions are a bit. I find them very odd, but I mean, uh, maybe it's a very Python y way of doing things. I'm not sure. Let me just check that works. Let's rerun it. so yeah so we could just change the tile number here now and then um, depending where you've inserted the appropriate tile you will get the appropriate result I guess oh, 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 oh. sorry I'm yawning a bit god am I going to make it past midnight tonight I hope so Ah, I'm out of water. So what are you guys up to tonight? Anything? Or quite night in. I should be celebrating with my partner. Uh, we haven't eaten yet. I've cooked. It's just sitting on the stove. I need to do some rice rounds some um, curry. Oh, your neighbourhood normally does fireworks. Cool. It's actually really warm over here as well for the time of year. I don't know, it's like where you are. You're in um, Florida anyhow, aren't you, um, I post? So it's probably going to be warm there anyhow. But yeah, it's about 15 degrees over here, which is more like spring, springtime, nearly summertime even for here. Then again, Colorado was warm last few days, wasn't it? Ridiculous. Down forest fires in the winter. Now the snow is coming in and the snow is putting out the fires. How crazy is that shit? Man. I don't want to be in Colorado. A lot of people lost their houses. Yeah, complete with tornadoes. It's bonkers, man. Bonkers weather. You do not want that. Luckily in the UK we don't get too much in the way of extreme weather, so it tends to be um, you know fairly moderate here. How is EV car adoption in the UK? It's very slow at the moment. Very slow. It is being encouraged. Let's put it that way. Um, but it takes time. But it's the same across Europe as well. So, you know, you're going to find it the same thing. Uh, pretty much all the way across Europe. Very similar. Right, okay guys, well I'm going to call it an evening, I'm going to call this 2021, last stream of. Oh, Lois saying, granddaughter and boyfriend are living in the house and we're going out now, going out, but uh, 
now are staying in and inviting them out. All right, well, guys and girls, enjoy your evening. Um, have a good new year, and I'll see you some point. Um, I'll probably see you next week, probably Wednesday. Let's see how see how it goes. Um, but otherwise, yeah, good luck bringing in 2022. Let's hope it's better than 2021 was. It's not that difficult to beat. Thank you. Ciao, folks.